Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias St. Eochon Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Tuesday, March 26th, 2024, and here are the readings for today. A reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 4, verses 8 through 15. Cain said to Abel his brother, Let us go out to the field. And when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground, and now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground, it shall no longer yield to you its strength. You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me this day away from the ground, and from thy face I shall be hidden, and I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will slay me. Then the Lord said to him, Not so. If anyone slays Cain, vengeance shall be taken upon him sevenfold. And the Lord put a mark on Cain, lest any who came upon him should kill him. A reading from the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 5 verses 7 through 16. Thus says the Lord, For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah are his pleasant planting. And he looked for justice, but behold bloodshed, for righteousness, but behold a cry. Woe to those who join house to house, who add field to field until there is no more room, and you are made to dwell alone in the midst of the land. The Lord of hosts has sworn in my hearing, Surely many houses shall be desolate, large and beautiful houses, without inhabitant. For ten acres of vineyard shall yield but one bath, and a homer of seed shall yield but one ephah. Woe to those who rise early in the morning, that they may run after strong drink, who tarry late into the evening till wine inflames them. They have lyre and harp, timbre and flute, and wine at their feasts, but they do not regard the deeds of the Lord or see the work of his hands. Therefore my people go into exile for want of knowledge. Their honored men are dying of hunger, and their multitude is parched with thirst. Therefore Sheol has enlarged its appetite and opened its mouth beyond measure. And the nobility of Jerusalem and her multitude go down, her throng and he who exalts in her. Man is bowed down, and men are brought low, and the eyes of the haughty are humbled. But the Lord of hosts is exalted in justice, and the holy God shows himself holy in righteousness. A reading from the book of Proverbs, chapter 5, verses 1 through 15. My son, be attentive to my wisdom. Incline your ear to my understanding, that you may keep discretion, and your lips may guard knowledge. For the lips of a loose woman drip honey and her speech is smoother than oil. But in the end, she is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death, her steps follow the path to Sheol. She does not take heed to the path of life, her ways wander, and she does not know it. And now, O sons, listen to me, and do not depart from the words of my mouth. Keep your way far from her, and do not go near the door of her house, lest you give your honor to others and your years to the merciless, lest strangers take their fill of your strength, and your labors go to the house of an alien. And at the end of your life you groan, when your flesh and body are consumed, and you say, How I hated discipline, and my heart despised reproof. I did not listen to the voice of my teachers, or incline my ear to my instructors. I was at the point of utter ruin in the assembled congregation. Drink water from your own cistern, flowing water from your own well. So because we celebrated the Feast of the Annunciation yesterday, the readings for the day of Genesis, Isaiah, and Proverbs were skipped in favor of reading the Epistle and Gospel reading for Annunciation. But in the Genesis account, we have the story of the birth of Cain and Abel, Abel being the firstborn and then Cain, and how each one had separate responsibilities. Cain was a tiller of the soil, 
Abel was a shepherd, and each was required to give a sacrifice to God. They gave their sacrifices, and Abel's was accepted by God, and Cain's was not. And then there is a conversation between Cain and God, who God warns Cain that there's evil lurking right at his doorstep, and if he's not careful, he will fall victim to that evil. Well, what happens? We know what happens. Cain kills his brother Abel, takes him out to a field and kills him, so we have the first murder. And then there is another discussion between Cain and God, and because of what Cain did, he is cursed. What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground, says God to Cain, which has opened its mouth to receive your, blood, your brother's blood from your hand. And now you are cursed from the ground. It shall no longer yield to you its strength. You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me this day away from the ground, and from thy face I shall be hidden. I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will slay me. Then the Lord said, Not so, if anyone slays Cain, vengeance shall be taken upon him sevenfold. And the Lord put a mark on Cain, lest anyone who came upon him should kill him. And that is the conclusion of today's reading. And then tomorrow's starts with, then Cain went away from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod, east of Eden. And then it goes on to tell the rest of the story, the lineage of Cain. So anyway, we'll deal with that tomorrow. But looking at today, what are we to take from this? Obviously, we hear the story of the first murder, but there's more to it than that. The problem of Cain is manifold, but one of the bigger problems is his unwillingness to accept his personal responsibility. And we also saw this in Adam and Eve, because neither of them owned up to their own transgressions, but instead pointed out that another creature, in Adam's case Eve, in Eve's case the serpent, something else was responsible for what happened in their for their actions. So, back to Cain. Cain's sacrifice is rejected. God tells him he can make it right, and he should make it right, and if he does make it right, then all will be well, but instead of making it right, he kills his brother. And the end result of that is the blood into the field makes the ground incapable of raising anything of any quality. Since the blood fell into the ground, it makes the soil useless. And so Cain has to wander. He has no choice. He can't stay where he is and expect to be an agriculturalist. He has to go other places. And he becomes dependent on the provisions that are given to him by other people. And then he goes into this land, the land of Nod, which is the land where God is not. That is a totally dreadful place, a place where we would not wish anyone to go. So this is the story. If Cain had instead just repented and made his offering with gratitude and thanksgiving to God, rather than out of sheer obligation and perhaps a hint of resentment, then Cain would not have had to have been driven out of the land because he would not have killed his brother. And so there are consequences for all of these things that happen. Consequences for Adam and Eve because through them mortality comes into the world. Consequences because of Cain's refusal to do things right. 
his brother becomes the first one, the first dead, the first inhabitant of that nasty realm where the devil is. And Cain himself is brought into torment because he is no longer able to do what he was gifted to do. So one more point, Abel. If you look at the icon of the resurrection of Christ, or as I would call it, the ascent into, or the, excuse me, the descent into Hades, which has Christ raising Adam and Eve out of their tombs, collected around Christ are many figures of the Old Testament. And two of them that are of particular attention, other than Christ and Adam and Eve, would be first John the Baptizer pointing to others and saying, see, this is the one I was telling you about. But then on the other side, there was a young man, beardless, which indicates that he's a young man, that's Abel. So even in the iconography, the writing of the icon makes a dramatic point that Christ raises Abel because he was the first one to die. Such beautiful symbolism and profundity in that particular thing in that icon gives us a reminder that poor Abel had to suffer for so long in the realm of the dead and Christ came and he delivered him from death as well to glory and honor and worship go to Christ always now and ever and unto ages of ages.